The Celtics are rolling, sporting the best point differential in the Eastern Conference and a 20-6 record with their current starting lineup of Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Al Horford, Rob Williams, and resident superstar Jason Tatum. Boston now boasts the second-best defense in the league over the course of the entire season, and since December 30th, the Celtics are outscoring teams by a whopping 11 points per game. We recently discussed the Time Lord roaming away from the ball. He's on a spot-up wing here and can unleash his weak side shot blocking. And Boston tries to keep Williams in particular spots on the floor. Again, he starts on a wing and switches to the dangerous Ja Morant, but that's just to keep him low. When Morant pops out the other side, Boston switches again, and this is so coordinated that this defender doesn't even need to look to switch onto Morant. From there, Williams stays in the paint against a big and uses his shot-blocking gifts to send it into the stands. The Celtics also use the triple switch, where three defenders are involved. Tatum switches onto Morant, but Smart doesn't take his man, instead going to the corner, and Rob slides in to take Tatum's man. This can work because Jason can hang with Ja, who doesn't even try him on this play, and it ends up in a really well-defended shot. In the Brad Stevens era, Boston would switch like this to protect small guards like Kemba Walker. There's Smart sliding down, so Kemba can triple switch back to the diminutive Kyle Lowry. But there's no small guard to protect anymore, so these switches are about weaponizing the defense. Smart and Rob exchange behind the play here, keeping Williams in the paint, and since Nick Claxton isn't a threat in that spot, Smart can sit on Kyrie Irving's right hand to help Grant Williams, Rob can control the paint if he gets a step, and Smart sinks perfectly inside Claxton, and the whole thing is just a defensive clinic. Smart is now Boston's smallest player most of the time, and he loves switching onto most big men in the post and holding his ground, because he's a 6'3 bulldog who can guard bigger positions, which helps avoid any mismatches from all the switching, and lets Boston set the pieces behind the play the way that they want. We've talked about Marcus's all-defensive value before, blowing up screens at the point of attack, it helps to have a savvy veteran like Al Horford out there too, and yet he can guard the post and provide some paint protection with shot blocking or sliding over and taking charges. That helps him rank sixth in the league in forced turnovers per possession. He can also make some mind-boggling reads. He and Grant Williams are preparing for Morant to come off a screen but instead, DeAnthony Melton slips to the hoop and Smart somehow arrives at the same time the ball does, which is enough to save a layup. And then Grant is nimble enough at 6'6 six six to stay with Ja in a packed paint and destroy his shot attempt. A huge key to all this switching is how interchangeable the parts are. The 6'6 six Brown passes Kevin Durant to the 6'6 six six Williams, and now look at the floor. Rob can roam off his man to deter a drive, and if KD goes to his sweet spot, Smart can dig over and bother the shot, and that ends up in another forced turnover. This is all excellent coaching from rookie Ime Yudoka, making sure his switch defenders aren't exposed on an island. Horford switches onto Irving, Rob can roam off the corner to help, and Smart is trying to move up into Kyrie's other driving lane, and his little stunt there toward the middle is enough to trip up Irving. On this one, Morant is passed all the way over to Tatum. On the inbounds, Rob and Smart switch this ball screen so Williams can come off the weak side, and Smart is up near the elbow again to help build a wall against Morant so Tatum doesn't have to guard him alone in isolation, and that's another excellent defensive trip until a loose ball foul on the rebound. Boston's personnel makes this system work. Jalen Brown is a physically sturdy wing who can guard perimeter players well, and while he's better on the ball than off it, he's still big enough to offer resistance in the paint, on switches, and in help. Then there's Tatum, who's a tapered 6'8", and he adds length and rim protection on the back line, and his man defense has improved too. 
He has the strength to bang with bigger forwards down low. He also uses his length wisely, walling off KD briefly here, and then forcing a turnover by poking it off Kevin's hand. Durant did get Tatum a few times this game. He gets a step and Jason can't recover. And notice the difference in rim protection with Rob Williams up high instead of sitting on the opposite block. On the very next trip, Tatum really locks in though, picking Durant up high, sliding his feet, and then because of that length, it's just about impossible to guard Durant better than that. His defensive agility and footwork has really stood out at times, later in the game locking up Kyrie in isolation, and it helps to have defenders behind him in the lane, but Tatum's physical tools do a ton of the work there. Of course, Jason is the centerpiece of the Celtics' offense, and after an incredibly bumpy start to the season, he's scoring 29 points per 75 possessions on a healthy 59% true shooting since December 1st. More importantly, his decision-making has tightened up and he's making quicker choices while slowing the game down. Here, he hesitates on an extra pass and that turns into a contested jumper for Brown. Or on this Derek White drive, when Tatum gets it back, he record scratches the entire offense, but White had relocated to the corner for a wide open three. Compare that to some of the masterpieces he's authored lately, where in Philadelphia, he touches along that extra pass instantly, leading to a wide open look. Or on this play, he catches it and goes right away, only to spin into traffic and quick dish it to the corner for another open triple. I've talked about Tatum's development as a playmaker before, but this is about more than that. This is about his tempo, his control of the game at his speed while making the right decisions. He turns the corner off the screen here and is methodically reading this corner defender while dribbling in traffic. And since he never slides over, it's a lob to Rob. Lob to Rob, I like that. I took it, I took it, I took it. Later in the game, it's a similar situation, and the second the corner defender moves in, he punishes him with a laser off of one hand for a Horford jumper. This is the art of playing slowly while acting quickly, and Boston's offense is better for it, with a 118 offensive rating with Tatum on the floor since December 1st, which would look like a top 10 offense in that time span. Jason is also such a big body that he's able to hold off defenders while pushing his way into the paint to find his spots. This is similar to how Luka Doncic uses his big frame to go where he wants with a live dribble, even all the way to the rim. You can also see his control in how he handles traps, calmly using his size to pass over the top, which leads to another open shot. He's doubled in the post here, and again, it's a relatively quick action to find the open man, and then some nice extra passing from the Celtics brings it back to him in the corner. Boston has enough connective tissue passers to take advantage of Tatum's quick attacks. It was Horford there moving it along to a shooter, and on this play, the Nets throw a ton of defensive attention to help the overmatch Seth Curry, and Tatum flicks it to Smart, who instantly moves it to the corner for a Jalen 3. I think Smart has actually been a huge key on offense too, playing a more traditional facilitator role as the point guard, which helps reduce Tatum's load. Smart's not much of a scoring threat himself, but he's good enough to run certain pick and roll actions and set up teammates. He's probably Boston's best pure passer, so he can read a dynamic opening like this when Rob dives to the basket. And Marcus's decision-making has been better this season, passing up borderline shot attempts for himself to set the table for his teammates. By the way, Grant Williams can absolutely stroke it on these spot-ups. He's at 44% from three this season and 51% from the corner. So, if you're keeping score, the Celtics have multiple bigs who can stretch the floor as shooters. Most of them can pass as well, either from the top or in more dynamic situations like this. And smart at point guard frees up Jalen Brown to do what he does best, which is score and finish plays. Brown isn't nearly the playmaker Tatum is, 
You don't want him playing a ton of pick and roll, for instance, but he is excellent on sharply attacking from the top like this or coming off ball for unencumbered isolation touches in his sweet spots. The other big thing Smart does by playing point guard is he keeps that defensive lineup so big with multiple rim protectors and all those switchable similar parts that communicate and work together so well. I'm not sure where the Celtics are going to finish in the Eastern Conference standings. They've climbed all the way to fifth, but between Ime Yudoka's coaching, their defensive personnel, and the continually expanding brilliance of Jason Tatum, they look like a team that has enough to make it all the way to the NBA Finals. To support this channel, check out patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball. We have additional content, proprietary stats that update daily, and more. One more note on this one, if Boston meets Philadelphia, since 2019, Joel Embiid is scoring seven fewer points per 75 against Al Horford in Boston with an 8% drop in true shooting. So that would be an exciting matchup to see how it plays out. Let me know your thoughts on this one below. And of course, wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day.